What's up guys? I'm out here messing with the quail this morning and uh, enjoying a cigar. And uh, I thought I would just make a little video about uh, mostly the pros and the cons of, of Bob White quail versus Caternix quail. Um, I've recently sold out of all my Bob Whites uh, just because they didn't really work out for me uh, with with what I've got to work with and everything so I'm gonna try to at least let you watch the birds while I talk so you're not just watching me talk but uh, so one of the biggest things that you need to consider before you get you know, Bob White's or Caternix is housing. And this is a, this cage right here is about two, two foot deep and about eight foot long. And this is what I had my Bob Whites in. I had about 12 Bob Whites in here. And they did okay. You know, they, they laid good for me. But Bob Whites are gonna do a lot better if you can build them like an aviary type enclosure on the ground they really really do better on the ground and where i live at that's not really an option because uh, i'm in a in a urban area and i can't have anything on the ground uh, another thing is that the bob whites require a lot more space like I said, at the at the most, I had 12 in this cage. In my smaller cages, the ones that are, I'll show you. A, I'll show you a smaller cage over here. that have got some more Caternix in. This cage is four foot long and two foot deep. I would only put at the most maybe four Bob Whites in here, and I've only got four Caternix in here right now, but I could put. I could easily put eight Caternix quail in this cage uh, and they wouldn't be overcrowded. So that's a that's a big thing to consider is that the Bob Whites are going to require you know more room than the Caternix are. Uh, feeding requirements is is about the same. I, I had good luck feeding them the the game bird starter when they were chicks and the 18 percent chicken layer crumble as adults uh, so feeding them is going to be about the same um you know they they drank out of the little automatic waterers just like the caternix do um the bob whites are going to be a lot more flighty than the caternix as you can see i can get i can get right up on these birds and some of them run, some of them don't, but they're pretty calm for the most part. The Bob Whites, if I'd got this close to them, they would all be flying to the other side of the cage and freaking out. Um, the and then and then a really big thing that you have to consider um, is that the Caternix are gonna mature a lot faster. Than the bob whites Caternix quail is mature at 10 weeks usually starts laying at six to eight weeks a bob white is going to take six to eight months to mature to their full size and they're usually not going to start laying until the season after they're they're born and bob white lay are seasonal layers they're only going to lay in the warm months of the year. You know, they'll start laying in the spring. They'll quit laying in the early fall, which here in Alabama is usually about March or April, uh, depending on the weather, until, you know, around September, maybe October, also depending on the weather. That is probably the biggest reason why I got rid of them is because the turnaround with the Caternix is a lot faster. You know, 
I can, in 10 weeks, I can, I can, you know, have birds fully grown out and lay in a lot quicker and grown a lot quicker because meat and egg production is my primary purpose with these birds. I will say this though, in favor of the Bob Whites, the Bob Whites to me are a lot better quality meat than the Caternics. The Bob White is going to be a white meat, um, where the Caternics is, is a darker meat. Even though the Bob White is more of a wild variety of a quail, they have a more domestic meat quality. Whereas the Caternics have got more of a wild meat quality to me, kind of like you would see with a dove or, you know, some sort of, you know, bird like that. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a darker meat. It's almost got, a, to me, a livery taste to it. And I, to be perfectly honest, don't really find it that appealing. But um, I know a lot of people do. Um, I'm trying to think of, of anything else. Also, the, another thing to consider, the Bob Whites, especially if you're keeping them in cages like this, are going to be more aggressive towards each other during the breeding season. During the off-season, you can have them all together, and they, they're they not really going to mess with each other. But during the breeding season... A lot of times you have to keep them in pairs, breeding pairs, because they they pair up and they only mate with the one, uh, the rooster's only going to mate with the one hen they're paired up with. Now I got lucky because the guy I had got my birds from had started them out in a big breeding group, so they did okay, but I did have them where they, they did pick one, peck on one bird and ran it off the feed. Uh, to the point where um, it's uh, it wound up getting weak and dying. Um, so that's another thing to take into consideration. You know, building a you know I you know a cage this size. You know, I could have made it into four compartments and had four breeding pairs in here if I needed to. But that's just something to consider. Just you know, overall the Bob Whites are a lot more uh you know particular with their with their environment that they're in they uh they're just a little bit harder and i also i didn't get as good hatch rates with the with the bob white quail as i did with caternix and the chicks were not as hardy uh, i lost a lot more bob white chicks than I did Caternix chicks, which is frustrating because the Bob Whites take uh, about 24 to 26 days to hatch versus 18 days for Caternix eggs to hatch. So it's really frustrating to go almost a month incubating Bob White eggs and then lose most of your chicks. That's another reason why I got rid of them. All in all, I, I think for my situation, you know, I'm living in the city. Uh, the Caternics are also a lot more quiet than the Bob Whites. Even the rooster's little trill call that they do is nothing like that loud whistle that you get from the Bob Whites. Uh, the males especially are really loud. The hens also make a little bit of a racket too sometimes. They have their own little call that they do. So that's that's another thing to take into consideration. All in all, I would recommend getting started, especially if you're, you don't have a lot of room like I do, that the Caternix is, is going to be your best bet. Um, they're just a lot easier to work with. And you see your results quicker, you know, if you're breeding for a specific purpose. <clears throat> if you want to try to breed certain colors, certain sizes, it's a lot quicker to do it with Caternix 
than it is with with Bob Watts. And so so that's that's about it. Uh, you know. Trying to think if there's anything else. I will say that the Bob White eggs were uh, a little bit more uh, desirable. I had more people contact me wanting Bob White eggs than Caternix eggs, so that was a plus. But another thing too about Bob Whites is a lot of states that you're going to have to have a permit to keep those bob whites and to sell those eggs and those birds because they're considered a, a native game bird where the conternix quail or you don't most places you're not going to have to have any any special license to to keep them they're pretty common here in alabama there's a lot of people that raise them uh, not not much quality with most of them these birds you're looking at here are from kansas city quail farm which is one of the three james murray uh farm bloodline referral farms so james murray farm sells to those farms and those farms sell to the public and that would be kansas city quail farm southwest game birds and aj farms and uh, i'll show you these birds over here are from southwest game birds and they are they are really nice size birds uh i got these from a lady who who just wanted to get out of quail she just raising quail wasn't for her but these birds lay really big eggs and they're good size birds and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna cross these with the birds from kansas city quail and uh, strictly raise uh, jumbo browns uh, for meat and egg production. I've got this one little jumbo rooster. I've, he's my first rooster that I got. and I don't know if I'm going to breed him or not. It just depends on what uh, kind of size I get out of some of these other birds. I've got nine roosters and 11 hens, I think, in this big cage so but anyway uh i hope i maybe could help you a little bit with with making a decision about raising you know bob whites versus caternix um if you have any questions please feel free to comment i'll answer them as best i can um Definitely also check out the Caternix Corner YouTube page. Uh, Terry McLeish has a lot of great content on there. I learned a lot from him and getting started with the, with the quail. Also check out his website, CaternixCorner.com. It's a, a great resource there. Uh, it's a lot like Facebook, but there's no restrictions. You can pretty much do what you want to on there. Bar, and he's, he's got the Caternix Corner Farm Market as well. That's a nice website for buying and selling. But uh, anyway, uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching the video. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to. I'd appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one.